All right, welcome back into the Sports Source. This segment brought to you by Calhoun's. And look, if you're looking to grill out, call one of the open Calhoun's locations to get this all-included kit. Look at all the stuff you get there. The steaks, the vegetables, the seasoning bread, you got it. You just have to call and pick it up. They've got the, the takeout uh, right there curbside for you. Uh, Pellissippi, Oak Ridge, Pigeon Forge, Beard and Maryville, I believe the On the River location, but you'll have to check. Go check Facebook and their Calhoun's website, or the Calhoun's page on Facebook, and that'll have more information about who's open and who's not. Uh, but uh, right there, that's a pretty good deal, and you can do all that. I think it's like 25 bucks to feed two, 45 bucks to feed four. You're not gonna beat that. Grill out, enjoy the sun, get outside. Help your immune system by getting some vitamin D. All right. Let's welcome in the next member of our panel right down there, Ryan Callahan from GoBalls247.com. Ryan, thanks for being here today. Absolutely. Thanks All for having right. me. Um, last segment, we told you that the president wants things open by August and September. Those of us in sports media want things open yesterday. <laughs> um, but earlier this week, NFL legal counsel Jeff Pash uh, told reporters it was his expectation that the NFL season would go on in September as normal. In response to that, the NFL's chief medical officer, Dr. Alan Sills, he said, well, there will need to be certain prerequisites met before games begin, namely widespread testing. Uh, Ryan, one of the questions is, is testing going to be enough or are you going to have people that say, I'm waiting until there's a vaccine? What are your thoughts on, we, we all commented on the possibilities of getting this thing rolling by August, September. What are your thoughts? I, I think the big thing is there could be a few different uh, levels to this and one of them obviously is getting enough testing to where you can maybe send the players and the officials out there but still maybe not have fans in the stadium if you're talking about testing you still would have to have enough testing for what every fan in the stadium that, that's probably not going to happen so is it to the point where you can have fans back in or are we going to be playing in empty stadiums uh, and then beyond that you know if that's not an option are we going to develop herd immunity in time for, for that to be an option? I mean, there, there's a d bunch of different possibilities here. Um, I, I don't know how optimistic those are or how, how realistic those are at this point. I think the main thing I've learned so far is nobody really knows anything. And that's so like, we, it's, it's fun to guess at this, but yeah. so much is going to change in the next month or two. Clearly, we're, we're going to have a much better idea of this by even June than, than we do now, and a, a lot could change. It could die off on its own. We just yeah, don't know. Yeah, I mean, the, the Spanish flu, everybody compares this to 1918. Nobody found a cure for that one. It just went away. Yeah. It mutated in and then mutated right out. And it was gone. And I'll say that if we're going to have a football season, I, something about it still says to me that's our best hope, that this thing just dies off yep. on its own. Obviously, that would be the safest bet, but I think that's uh, anything short of that, and I think it's at least a question on some level whether, whether it's sort of working out how to get fans in the stadium or something else, it's going to be a, a problem. Now, um, along these lines, uh, Paul Feinbaum had a former Kansas State University, it's a Power Five school, uh, president on his school, on his uh, show this week, and uh, asked him about it. And he said, if there is no COVID vaccine in place by July, which that's not happening, uh, then he thinks it's almost impossible, it's unlikely that there will be college football unless you have a vaccine in July. Now that's a former Power Five president. So he's, he's taking a view of school as well. And I think that's one of the other interesting points, Josh. You know, we talked last week about creating an SEC only schedule, okay, shortened season. But here's the problem with even that. You've got 14 schools just in the SEC, forget the rest of the world. SEC, 14 schools in 11 states, and all these states are doing their own thing. What are the chances all 14 SEC schools get to the same day and reach the same decision about opening up? It could be one of those things where even if you do have football this fall, you have some SEC schools playing and some not. It's possible. Right. Uh, that's why I think we have to get back to the idea of you, you plan for a number of different scenarios, and that, that includes altering the schedule of how many games you would play, altering the timeline. There continues to be at least talk of maybe playing in the spring semester. And there also is a fear that if you play in the spring semester, some of your star players will say, I'm good. I'm just going to prepare for the NFL draft at that point because that is the time when they prepare for yeah. the NFL draft. And if that happens, so be it, I guess. The, the point would be prepare for any kind of scenario. I guess maybe the, the most optimistic timeline to get sports back as quickly as possible. What, what started this? It was the NBA saying, that's it for us, right? And then the very next day, the SEC and the other major conferences yeah. said, that's it for our tournaments. If, if somehow this summer you could get Major League Baseball and the NBA to happen, even if it's without fans, maybe that 
can at least get this process started. I think before that happens, before the pro leagues are in action, it's not realistic that the college leagues are. And there's been talk, of course, of moving the NBA, all their teams, to Las Vegas and doing kind of an Olympic Village type thing. Unfortunately, everyone was kind of eyeing China to see how they reopened their league, and they were scheduled to do it, and then they said, no, we're not, mm -hmm. which wasn't a great sign. Uh, but there is talk about doing the Olympic Village type scenario and moving a sport in there, playing without fans and that kind of thing. And we'll have a couple other options that we'll talk about later that I bet somebody will talk about later this summer. But uh, let, me, let me show you what Jeremy Pruitt said this week when he was asked about this. Uh, my first thoughts are with everybody throughout our country. I've said this many times, football is a sport. It's a great game. It's been really good to a lot of us. It's something that we, love, we all love doing. I know it's tough everybody that is involved right now, but there's also bigger issues out there right now that are being addressed obviously daily with our government, people that are situated with our medical field. So whenever that time comes, we'll be ready at Tennessee. But until then, we're gonna do everything that we can to support the rules and regulations that our university puts in place, that our city puts in place, our state, our federal government. That's all we can do um, I said a couple of weeks ago that I thought Philip Fulmer had done a great job in his press conference. Of, he, I don't think a lot of our politicians have been as good as Philip Fulmer was in terms of just human, calm, cool, collected. Credit to Jeremy Pruitt. Mm -hmm. I think he is coming through. He, know, he has gotten better. I mean, he should be. He's in his third year now. He's gotten better as this thing's gone. He's grown into that role. Great answer. Mm -hmm. Smart. We're not. I saw Dabo Swinney tried to be Mr. Positive yeah. this week, and I thought he just came across like an imbecile. We're going to do it. I believe we're going to do it. And that's great, Dabo, but reality is different. That's a calm, not panicky, but a serious statement. You're, Excellent. You heard Good for Pruitt. Dabo's new acronym, Tigers. This is going to end real soon. Um, <laughs> yeah, I hope yeah. he's right, but I think he's an idiot. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't think Jeremy Pruitt's going to do anything like that. But he touched on something there that's, that's the most important thing here. He touched on all the different levels of this that have to sign off on it. And that's the reality is you've got local government, state government, the university. If you're not going to have students and classes going on on campus, it's hard to play football or even practice it. So that's, that's I think, important to keep in mind. You've got a lot of steps this thing has to go through. The NCAA can't just come out and say, hey, we're doing this when colleges aren't on board or vice versa. Oh, just city and county for us here. Yeah. I mean, they, they've, city moved faster than the county here. And some of the county didn't want it to move as fast as it did. Uh, so it makes you wonder what's going to happen if you tease on the cusp. What are we doing? I mean, you probably have leaders in this area debating. It's going to be interesting. All right, we've got more to come. But first, let me tell you about a couple of our other clients here. Games and Things, they're doing sales by appointment. You can visit OurGameRoom.com right now. Uh, then give them a call. You'll find their phone number there. Give them a call. They'll meet with you by appointment. And let me tell you, if you're stuck inside the house, there's no better time for a foosball table or ping pong table or anything else they might have at games and things. KB Lawn Care. Hey, they work in the yard, folks. They're still out there. They're still going yard to yard. No contact necessary. They do great work. And uh, I know that uh, someone in their family has been touched. Uh, they're hoping not by the coronavirus right now, but uh, there have been a couple of people uh, attached to the show. Uh, sponsor-wise who've had to deal with coronavirus. It is serious. It is real. Hope you take it seriously. Be smart and stay at home and keep watching the Sports Source because coming up, next segment, uh, what are athletic directors thinking about right now? Uh, we'll discuss that. Some of them are saying one of the things we threw out last week on the show. Come on back on the Sports Source and we'll discuss all of it.